Defilements Upakalesa Sutta Majima Nikaya 128 I have heard that on one occasion the Blessed One was staying near Kosambi in Gosita's monastery. And on that occasion the Kosambi monks kept arguing, quarreling, and disputing, stabbing one another with weapons of the mouth. Then a certain monk went to the Blessed One, and, on arrival, having bowed down to him, sat to one side. As he was sitting there, he said to the Blessed One, Lord, the Kasambi monks here keep arguing, quarreling, and disputing, stabbing one another with weapons of the mouth. It would be good, Lord, if the Blessed One went to them out of sympathy. The Blessed One acquiesced with silence. Then he went to those monks and, on arrival, said to them, Enough, monks, don't quarrel, don't argue, don't make strife, don't dispute. When this was said, a certain monk said to the Blessed One, Wait, Lord Blessed One, may the Master of the Dhamma remain inactive, devoted to a pleasant abiding in the here and now. Lord Blessed One, we will be the ones who will be known for this argument, quarrel, strife, and dispute. A second time, the Blessed One said to those monks, Enough, monks, don't quarrel, don't argue, don't make strife, don't dispute. A second time, that monk said to the Blessed One, Wait, Lord Blessed One, may the Master of the Dhamma remain inactive, devoted to a pleasant abiding in the here and now. Lord Blessed One, we will be the ones who will be known for this argument, quarrel, strife, and dispute. A third time, the Blessed One said to those monks, Enough, monks. Don't quarrel. Don't argue. Don't make strife. Don't dispute. A third time, that monk said to the Blessed One, Wait, Lord Blessed One. May the Master of the Dhamma remain inactive, devoted to a pleasant abiding in the here and now. Lord Blessed One, we will be the ones who will be known for this argument, quarrel, strife, and dispute. Then, early in the morning, the Blessed One, having adjusted his lower robe and carrying his bowl and outer robes, went into Kasambi for alms. Having gone for alms in Kasambi, after his meal, returning from his alms round, having set his dwelling in order, taking his bowl and robes, he recited these verses while standing. Loud-voiced, on par with people at large, no one considers himself a fool. Though the Sangha is splitting, they don't consider the big picture. Completely forgotten, the words of the wise declaring the right range of speech, mouth stretching as far as they want, led on where, by what, they don't know. He insulted me, he hit me, he beat me, he robbed me. For those who brood on this, hostility isn't stilled. He insulted me, he hit me, he beat me, he robbed me. For those who don't brood on this, hostility is stilled. Hostilities aren't stilled through hostility. Regardless, hostilities are stilled through non-hostility. This, an unending truth. Unlike those who don't realize that we're here on the verge of perishing. Those who do, their quarrels are stilled. Bone breakers, killers, cattle thieves, robbers, those who plunder the nation, even they have their fellowship. Why shouldn't you have yours? If you gain a mature companion, a fellow traveler, right living, enlightened, overcoming all dangers, go with him, gratified, mindful. If you don't gain a mature companion, 
a fellow traveler, right living, enlightened. Go alone, like a king, renouncing his kingdom. Like the elephant in the Matanga wilds, his herd. Going alone is better. There is no companionship with a fool. Go alone, doing no evil, at peace. Like the elephant in the Matanga wilds. Having recited these verses while standing, the Blessed One went to Balakalanakaraka village. Now, on that occasion, Venerable Bagu was staying near Balakalanakaraka village. He saw the Blessed One coming from afar and, on seeing him, laid out a seat and water for washing the feet. The Blessed One sat down on the seat laid out and, seated, washed his feet. Venerable Bagu, having bowed down to the Blessed One, sat to one side. As he was sitting there, the Blessed One said to him, Is it tolerable, monk? Are you getting by? Are you weary from going for alms? It's tolerable, O Blessed One. I'm getting by, O Blessed One. And I'm not weary, Lord, from going for alms. Then the Blessed One, having instructed, urged, roused and encouraged Venerable Bagu with a Dhamma talk, got up from his seat and went to the eastern bamboo park. On that occasion, Venerable Anaruda, Venerable Nandia, and Venerable Kimbila were staying in the eastern bamboo park. The park warden saw the Blessed One coming from afar and, on seeing him, said to him, Contemplative, don't enter the park. There are three sons of good families living there, looking after one another. Don't disturb them. Venerable Anaruda heard the park warden conversing with the Blessed One, and on hearing him, said to the park warden, Friend park warden, don't stand in the way of the Blessed One. It's our teacher, the Blessed One, who has arrived. Then, Venerable Anuruddha went to Venerable Nandia and Venerable Kimbila, and, on arrival, said to them, Come out, Venerables, come out, Venerables. It's our teacher, the Blessed One, who has arrived. Then, Venerable Anuruddha, Venerable Nandia, and Venerable Kimbila went out to greet the Blessed One. One received his robe and bowl. Another laid out a seat. Another set out water for washing his feet. The Blessed One sat down on the seat laid out and, seated, washed his feet. They, having bowed down to the Blessed One, sat to one side. As they were sitting there, the Blessed One said to Venerable Anuruddha, Is it tolerable for you, Anuruddhas? Are you getting by? Are you weary from going for alms? It's tolerable, O Blessed One. We're getting by, O Blessed One. And we're not weary, Lord, from going for alms. But, Anarudas, are you living harmoniously, cordially, and without dispute, blending like milk and water, looking at one another with eyes of affection? Yes, Lord, we're living harmoniously, cordially, and without dispute, blending like milk and water, looking at one another with eyes of affection. But, Anarudas, how are you living harmoniously, cordially, and without dispute, blending like milk and water, looking at one another with eyes of affection? Here, Lord, the thought occurs to me. It's a gain for me, a great gain, that I'm living with companions like this in the holy life. I'm set on bodily acts of good will with regard to these venerable ones, to their faces and behind their backs. I'm set on verbal acts of good will with regard to these venerable ones, to their faces and behind their backs. I'm set on mental acts of good will with regard to these venerable ones, to their faces and behind their backs. The thought occurs to me, why don't I, Having cast aside my own mind, conduct myself in line with the mind of these venerable ones. So, 
Having cast aside my own mind, I conduct myself in line with the mind of these venerable ones. We are separate in body, Lord, but one, as it were, in mind. Venerable Nandia and Venerable Kimbila said to the Blessed One, Lord, here the thought occurs to me also. It's a gain for me, a great gain, that I'm living with companions like this in the holy life. I'm set on bodily acts of goodwill with regard to these venerable ones, to their faces and behind their backs. I'm set on verbal acts of goodwill with regard to these venerable ones, to their faces and behind their backs. I'm set on mental acts of goodwill with regard to these venerable ones, to their faces and behind their backs. The thought occurs to me, why don't I, having cast aside my own mind, conduct myself in line with the mind of these venerable ones. So, having cast aside my own mind, I conduct myself in line with the mind of these venerable ones. We are separate in body, Lord, but one, as it were, in mind. This, Lord, is how we are living harmoniously, cordially, and without dispute, blending like milk and water, looking at one another with eyes of affection. But, Anarudas, do you remain heedful, ardent, and resolute? Yes, Lord, we remain heedful, ardent, and resolute. But, Anarudas, how do you remain heedful, ardent, and resolute? Here, Lord, whichever of us returns first from going to the village for alms, lays out the seats, sets out the water for drinking and using, and sets out the refuse bucket. Whoever returns afterwards from going to the village for alms eats the leftovers, if there are any, and if he wants to. And if not, he throws them out in a place where there are no crops or dumps them into water without living beings in it. He puts away the seats, puts away the water for drinking and using, puts away the refuse bucket after having washed it, and sweeps the meal hall. Whoever sees that the drinking water jar, the using water jar, or the rinsing water jar are low or empty, refills it. If it occurs to him, it's too much for me, he calls another by waving, using hand signals, and they refill the drinking water jar or using water jar by joining hands. But we don't, for that reason, break into speech. And every five days, we discuss the Dhamma late into the night and after that resume our silence. That's how we remain heedful, ardent, and resolute. Excellent, Anarudas, excellent. But, remaining heedful, ardent, and resolute in this way, do you have a comfortable abiding where a superior human attainment, a truly noble distinction of knowledge and vision, has been attained? Lord, as we remain heedful, ardent, and resolute in this way, we perceive both light and a vision of forms. But not long afterward, the light and the vision of forms disappears, and we haven't ferreted out the reason for that. Anarudas, you should ferret out the reason for that. Even I, before my self-awakening, when I was still just an unawakened bodhisattva, perceived both light and a vision of forms. But not long afterward, the light and the vision of forms disappeared. The thought occurred to me, what is the cause, what is the reason why the light and the vision of forms have disappeared? Then the thought occurred to me, doubt has arisen in me, and on account of the doubt, my samadhi fell away. With the fading away of samadhi, the light and the vision of forms have disappeared. I will act in such a way that doubt doesn't arise in me again. So, staying heedful, ardent, and resolute, I perceived light and a vision of forms. But not long afterward, the light and the vision of forms disappeared. The thought occurred to me, what is the cause, what is the reason why the light and the vision of forms have disappeared. 
Then, the thought occurred to me. Inattention has arisen in me, and, on account of the inattention, my samadhi fell away. With the falling away of samadhi, the light and the vision of forms have disappeared. I will act in such a way that inattention doesn't arise in me again. So, staying heedful, ardent, and resolute, I perceived light and a vision of forms. But not long afterward, the light and the vision of forms disappeared. The thought occurred to me, what is the cause, what is the reason why the light and the vision of forms have disappeared? Then, the thought occurred to me, sloth and drowsiness has arisen in me, and on account of the sloth and drowsiness, my samadhi fell away. With the falling away of samadhi, the light and the vision of forms have disappeared. I will act in such a way that sloth and drowsiness doesn't arise in me again. So, staying heedful, ardent, and resolute, I perceived light and a vision of forms. But not long afterward, the light and the vision of forms disappeared. The thought occurred to me, what is the cause, what is the reason why the light and the vision of forms have disappeared? Then, the thought occurred to me, terror has arisen in me, and on account of the terror, my samadhi fell away. With the falling away of samadhi, the light and the vision of forms have disappeared. Suppose, Anarudas, that a man was traveling along a road, and murderers appeared on both sides. He would, for that reason, feel terrified. In the same way, terror arose in me, and on account of the terror, my samadhi fell away. With the falling away of samadhi, the light and the vision of forms disappeared. I thought, I will act in a way such that doubt, inattention, sloth and drowsiness, and terror don't arise in me again. So, staying heedful, ardent, and resolute, I perceived light and a vision of forms. But not long afterward, the light and the vision of forms disappeared. The thought occurred to me, what is the cause, what is the reason? why the light and the vision of forms have disappeared. Then, the thought occurred to me, excitement has arisen in me, and on account of the excitement, my samadhi fell away. With the falling away of samadhi, the light and the vision of forms have disappeared. Suppose, Anarudas, that a man, searching for portals to hidden treasure, suddenly came across five portals to hidden treasure. He would, for that reason, feel excitement. In the same way, excitement arose in me, and on account of the excitement, my samadhi fell away. With the falling away of samadhi, the light and the vision of forms have disappeared. I thought, I will act in such a way that doubt, inattention, sloth and drowsiness, terror, and excitement don't arise in me again. So, staying heedful, ardent and resolute, I perceived light and a vision of forms. But not long afterward, the light and the vision of forms disappeared. The thought occurred to me, what is the cause, what is the reason why the light and the vision of forms have disappeared? Then the thought occurred to me, boredom has arisen in me, and on account of the boredom, my samadhi fell away. With the falling away of samadhi, the light and the vision of forms have disappeared. I thought, I will act in such a way that doubt, inattention, sloth and drowsiness, terror, excitement, and boredom don't arise in me again. So, staying heedful, ardent, and resolute, I perceived light and a vision of forms. But not long afterward, the light and the vision of forms disappeared. The thought occurred to me, what is the cause, what is the reason why the light and the vision of forms have disappeared? Then, the thought occurred to me, excessive vigor has arisen in me, and on account of the excessive vigor, my samadhi fell away. With the falling away of samadhi, the light and the vision of forms disappeared. Suppose, Anarudas, that a man was grasping a baby quail tightly with both hands. 
it would die right there. In the same way, excessive vigor arose in me. I thought, I will act in such a way that doubt, inattention, sloth and drowsiness, terror, excitement, boredom, and excessive vigor don't arise in me again. So, staying heedful, ardent, and resolute, I perceived light and a vision of forms. But not long afterward, the light and the vision of forms disappeared. The thought occurred to me, what is the cause, what is the reason why the light and the vision of forms have disappeared? Then, the thought occurred to me, lax vigor has arisen in me, and on account of the lax vigor, my samadhi fell away. With the falling away of samadhi, the light and vision of forms have disappeared. Suppose, Anarudas, that a man was holding a baby quail loosely. It would fly out of his hands. In the same way, lax vigor arose in me, and on account of the lax vigor, my samadhi fell away. With the falling away of samadhi, the light and the vision of forms disappeared. I thought, I will act in such a way that doubt, inattention, sloth and drowsiness, terror, excitement, boredom, excessive vigor, and lax vigor do not arise in me. So, staying heedful, ardent, and resolute, I perceived light and a vision of forms. But not long afterward, the light and the vision of forms disappeared. The thought occurred to me, what is the cause, what is the reason why the light and the vision of forms has disappeared? Then, the thought occurred to me, diverse perceptions have arisen in me, and on account of diverse perceptions, my samadhi fell away. With the falling away of samadhi, the light and vision of forms have disappeared. I thought, I will act in such a way that doubt, inattention, sloth and drowsiness, terror, excitement, boredom, excessive vigor, lax vigor, and diverse perceptions don't arise in me again. So, staying heedful, ardent, and resolute, I perceived light and a vision of forms. But not long afterward, the light and the vision of forms disappeared. Then the thought occurred to me. Excess absorption in forms has arisen in me, and on account of excess absorption in forms, my samadhi fell away. With the falling away of samadhi, the light and vision of forms have disappeared. I thought, I will act in a way such that doubt, inattention, sloth and drowsiness, terror, excitement, boredom, excessive vigor, lax vigor, diverse perceptions, and excess absorption in forms don't arise in me again. So, understanding that doubt is a defilement of the mind, I abandoned the doubt defilement of the mind. Understanding that inattention is a defilement of the mind, I abandoned the inattention defilement of the mind. Understanding that sloth and drowsiness is a defilement of the mind, I abandoned the sloth and drowsiness defilement of the mind. Understanding that terror is a defilement of the mind, I abandoned the terror defilement of the mind. Understanding that excitement is a defilement of the mind, I abandoned the excitement defilement of the mind. Understanding that boredom is a defilement of the mind, I abandoned the boredom defilement of the mind. Understanding that excessive vigor is a defilement of the mind, I abandoned the excessive vigor defilement of the mind. Understanding that lax vigor is a defilement of the mind, I abandoned the lax vigor defilement of the mind. Understanding that diverse perceptions are a defilement of the mind, I abandoned the diverse perceptions defilement of the mind. Understanding that excessive absorption in forms is a defilement of the mind, I abandoned the excessive absorption in forms defilement of the mind. So, staying heedful, ardent, and resolute, I perceived light but did not see forms, or saw forms but did not perceive light, for an entire night, for an entire day, and for an entire day and night. The thought occurred to me, at the time when, not attending to the theme of forms, I attend to the theme of light, 
That is the time when I perceive light, but do not see forms. But at the time when, not attending to the theme of light, I attend to the theme of forms, that is the time when I see forms, but do not perceive light for an entire night, for an entire day, for an entire day and night. So, staying heedful, ardent, and resolute, I perceived light, but did not see forms, or saw forms, but did not perceive light, for an entire night, for an entire day, and for an entire day and night. The thought occurred to me, what is the cause, what is the reason why I perceive light, but do not see forms, or see forms, but do not perceive light, for an entire night, for an entire day, and for an entire day and night. The thought occurred to me, at the time when, not attending to the theme of forms, I attend to the theme of light, that is when I perceive light, but do not see forms. But at the time when, not attending to the theme of light, I attend to the theme of forms, that is the time when I see forms, but do not perceive light, for an entire night, for an entire day, and for an entire day and night. So, staying heedful, ardent, and resolute, I perceived limited light and limited forms, and measureless light and measureless forms, for an entire night, for an entire day, and for an entire day and night. The thought occurred to me, what is the cause, what is the reason why I perceive limited light and limited forms, and measureless light and measureless forms, for an entire night, for an entire day, and for an entire day and night. The thought occurred to me, at the time when my samadhi is limited, my vision is limited. With limited vision, I perceive limited light and see limited forms. But at the time when my samadhi is measureless, my vision is measureless. With measureless vision, I perceive measureless light and see measureless forms for an entire night, for an entire day, and for an entire day and night. When, having understood that doubt is a defilement of the mind and having abandoned doubt, having understood that inattention is a defilement of the mind and having abandoned inattention, having understood that sloth and drowsiness is a defilement of the mind and having abandoned sloth and drowsiness, having understood that terror is a defilement of the mind and having abandoned terror, having understood that excitement is a defilement of the mind, and having abandoned excitement, having understood that boredom is a defilement of the mind, and having abandoned boredom, having understood that excessive vigor is a defilement of the mind, and having abandoned excessive vigor, having understood that lax vigor is a defilement of the mind, and having abandoned lax vigor, Having understood that diverse perceptions are a defilement of the mind and having abandoned diverse perceptions. Having understood that excessive absorption in forms is a defilement of the mind and having abandoned excessive absorption in forms. The thought occurred to me. Those defilements of the mind are abandoned in me. What if I were to develop samadhi in three ways? So, Anarudas, I developed samadhi with thought and evaluation. I developed samadhi without thought, but with a modicum of evaluation. And I developed samadhi without thought or evaluation. I developed samadhi with rapture. I developed samadhi without rapture. I developed samadhi with enjoyment. I developed samadhi with equanimity. When, in me, samadhi with thought and evaluation was developed. Samadhi without thought, but with a modicum of evaluation was developed. Samadhi without thought or evaluation was developed. Samadhi with rapture was developed. Samadhi without rapture was developed. Samadhi with enjoyment was developed. And Samadhi with equanimity was developed. Knowledge and vision arose in me. Unshakable is my release. This is the last birth. There is now no future becoming. That is what the Blessed One said. Gratified, venerable, Anuruddha delighted in the Blessed One's words.